Hello, and welcome back to What Is It About the Weather presents You Ask, We Answer. This week's question, does lightning go up or does it come down? And I want to thank Kirk for asking because there's been a lot of talk on this the last few years. And depending on how you read what you read, it, it can be a little confusing as to what's really going on. Now, I must apologize. I'd really hoped to be outside filming and instead the weather just hasn't allowed that in the last couple of weeks. You're going to have to just get some of my lightning shots from the last couple of months. Hopefully they'll work well, however, in telling the topic. And I would have come in eventually anyways, but uh, I, you know, I always look for a little live action in, in this week not to happen. The flip side was my latest WeatherWise magazine arrived when I was planning this episode a few weeks back and voila, right on the front cover, a lightning article. It was written by Walt Lyons, who was past AMS president, and Tom Warner gave a lot of inputs as well, who is a lightning researcher and has studied this quite a bit. And the article is available online for everybody to read currently. Now that may change, so if you're interested in the topic, do look at the show notes and go take a look at the article. It is well written and is a good summary of what we're going to talk about today. Now, this image I'm showing you now really captures the majority of lightning. The majority of lightning, roughly 75% on average, is what we call intra or inner cloud lightning. So it stays up there in the sky. And it can be either like this, where you know, you're seeing an actual you know, lightning bolt per se, or it can look like this, where you're just seeing a distant thunderstorm and all you're seeing is the illumination of the clouds. And that's why there are times when you know, you can visually see the storm and maybe not even hear the thunder because it's so far away. But that lightning isn't really the focus of the question, which is, you know, when, when we're talking about that cloud to ground connection, you know, where, where does it start? Now let's talk a little bit about what's going on and some of the key elements of lightning. So generally speaking, you kind of need a turbulent situation, right? You need some craziness going on. And that happens with a good thunderstorm. You're getting up movement, down movement, which allows this kind of separation of particles. The other thing that's kind of key in all this is ice. Uh, we didn't always understand that. We don't fully understand it today, but we do know it's, it's a key element to weather storms or even you know, heavy downpours are electrically inclined versus not. So what's going on is you've got these kind of icy oriented areas towards the top of the storm, and one area of it in, usually in the bottom portion of that cloud is, is forming negative particles are coming together. All the snarky parts of the storm are coming together. And usually up above it, you have more of the positive charge. So that lightning in a cloud to cloud is kind of seeking out, you know, still creating that connection within the clouds. But when it's going to ground, it's usually starting from that negative area. And what happened is stepped leaders go out from that area and it goes, hey, I want to find some positive friends. I need, I need to be <laughs> I need my mood changed. And so they go out, look at the ground, and then from the ground, some positive source finally goes, woohoo, hey, I'm here. And it shoots up and they meet. Usually not, they, they do meet a little bit off the ground, and then all that positive energy shoots up into the cloud. And that's usually what we see in terms of the visual representation. In, an example here, in this strike here, that visualization is actually the movement or the flow from of energy going from the ground up. So the strike started from the cloud, it moved down, the ground pushed some stuff up, and then it pushed a bunch of energy, but really the starting point. And again, I don't have the photography capability to produce it, but if you look at a shot like this and you see you know, this, this kind of forks all over the place, so imagine that lightning is going out and it's, it's searching, and that's really what it's doing. All these leaders kind of look like that and they're out looking, and when it makes this connection, bang, we're back to the situation. Now, in some cases, like, well, let's look at this one here. So this one here's flash, way too close, and that's maybe what it looks like to you, but behind it, now let's go to, to more of a regular strike, is, is this strike going on? And, and we see it in this kind of line, and that can, it can be reinforced, the, the return, a return strike can happen multiple times, which may be sometimes where you see kind of a flash, is it's not just an initial surge, but there's multiple surges that may take that same path. It's kind of like the path of least resistance um, when you think about a lot of things. So that connection's already made and it takes advantage of that and neutralizes the situation sort of thing. So generally speaking, you have to say, wait, now I do want to show you a picture. This is not mine and I've never captured one of these. This is an example actually of where lightning 
theoretically started from the ground. I mean, it's the best way to think about it. And you have a situation where from the ground, charged particles went looking to the sky and made a connection, okay? So it can happen both ways. The most common way starts the cloud, goes to the ground, although when you think about the whole combined relationship, there's movement in both directions. Now there are cases, and you know we're going to talk a little bit more in the next episode about how we measure lightning, and, and we'll talk a little bit about the some of the more dangerous situations. Like, you know, I talked about the top of that cloud being positively charged, and that can be a really dangerous situation when that goes off in seek of a connection to the ground. So, next time, like I said, we're going to get into more about how we measure. You know, you we've seen these things. We're trying to improve lightning safety. So, how do we measure these lightning strikes so that you know when they're coming? And we'll also talk a little bit about that safety element. So again, in summary, most often it starts in the cloud, it goes to the ground, but it is really a two-way street. And you know, the key to keeping it in mind is, from a visual standpoint, when you're enjoying the storms, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and from a safety standpoint, it also doesn't really matter. You don't want to be around it either way. Uh, but more often than not, when you're going, talking cloud to ground, it starts in the clouds. It always starts in the clouds. With snarky, negative things, right? The most common cases. So until next time, you can check us out on the website, whatisitabouttheweather.com, right? Or you can follow me on social media, Mark underscore Jelinek, at either Twitter or Instagram. You'll see a lot of my pictures there. Some of these lightning strikes have actually been in there. May you have good... And in my case, like, you know, the weather's been great lately. It just hasn't been lightning-filled. May you have good, enjoyable, interesting, but most of all, safe weather. This is a 2 white Super Productions.